This short video demonstration takes a look at DirectNFS Access Mode Backup and Recovery on a Tintry VM store with Veeam Backup and Replication. Looking at the Veeam console, we have one job that has completed successfully and two backup jobs executing. Let's take a quick look at a key piece of Veeam documentation that describes what a backup with direct NFS access mode consists of. We've highlighted step 5 to call out the data transfer path. VM data blocks are copied directly from the Tintry NFS data store over the LAN to a Veeam backup proxy. There's an expectation that this transport mode will outperform network block device backups as well as SCSI hot add backups because it bypasses the ESXi host. Keep in mind that direct NFS access mode is supported with physical and virtual proxy servers. Depending on how your proxy server is configured, you may or may not be bypassing the ESXi host. Back on the Veeam console, each client has three virtual disks of 512 gigs, and the disks are being backed up simultaneously. Note that the detailed backup proxy messages include the NFS label, an indication that the backup is using the direct NFS access transport mode. A question we sometimes hear being asked is whether or not direct NFS backups use VMware snapshots. The answer is yes, and you can see a message here indicating that a VM snapshot was created. While the two executing jobs are performing nominally, we're going to take a look at what we've configured and the underlying hardware everything is running on. Each of the backup jobs being executed is using a unique backup proxy, and they're both hosted on an older R720 server. As you can see, both proxies are virtualized, and the backup jobs are causing heavy resource utilization. Clicking the Performance tab, you can see we're pushing the Dell 720 ESXi host CPU utilization quite heavily. Actual production performance is likely to vary based on the proxy hardware being used and whether the proxy deployment is physical or virtualized. Switching to the Tintree VM Store user interface, we've already filtered the list of running VMs such that we only see the Veeam clients. We can double click a specific client and easily see the read data transfer rate in megabytes per second. We can also drill down to look at individual virtual disks, which gives you granular visibility into backup performance. Within the lab, we're using a second Tintry VM store as storage for our proxies as well as our backup repositories. Let's take a look at it. We'll filter the VMs to see our Veeam components. Note that we have a third proxy that isn't currently being used. We can drill into a specific host to see additional granular detail. Here we can see the write traffic in megabytes per second being saved into a repository. Switching to the Veeam console, let's take a look at one of the backup proxies. Here we can see that the transport mode has been configured to use direct storage access. Optionally, failover to network mode can be enabled if desired. We have also configured manual data store selection. Our naming and DNS configuration make this a requirement in the lab. Automatic data store selection may be possible in other environments.
looking at a backup job, we select the storage settings and then select advanced settings. On the storage tab, we have deselected the option for inline deduplication, and we've also selected a compression level of none. We did this because the Tintree VM store we're using as a backup repository performs compression and deduplication. On the vSphere tab, we've made sure that Enable VMware Tools Quiescence has been deselected. This is a limitation imposed by the Direct NFS Access Mode Transport. Taking another look at the Veeam Admin Guide, this limitation is clearly documented. At this point, we'll allow the backups to complete before looking at restores with Direct NFS. All right, we click the Backups Disk icon to take a look at recovering data. Right-clicking Veeam Client 12, we can see a number of recovery options. In testing restores, we've noted that full VM and VM hard disk recoveries use the direct NFS transport mode. Let's go ahead and recover an entire disk. But before we kick off the restore, let's delete some data on the Veeam client. We'll connect to the client, log on, and then delete some data. Formatting the Y drive will suffice for this demonstration. All right, the format is complete, and the drive is empty. We log off and close the console connection. Back to the restore, we can see a warning dialog indicating that the VM will be powered off for the duration of the restore job. We'll select this VMDK which correlates to the Y drive we formatted earlier. We input a restore reason and continue. We enable the option of powering on the VM after restoring and continue. As the restore proceeds, note that Veeam has selected the VMware Backup Proxy the first use of this proxy within the context of this demonstration. This proxy is also virtualized and resides on a Dell R710 host. Also note the NFS label, which indicates that this restore is using the direct NFS access mode transport. Fast forwarding through the restore, we can see the single disk restore data transfer rate displayed in the log. Eventually, the restore job completes. At this point, we'll take another look at the client. Here we can see that the Y drive has been restored. This concludes the direct NFS demonstration. Thank you.